morning, everyone, on this soggy, soggy morning. Good morning. Uh, our first hymn, our gathering hymn, is 139. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, and if you will stand as you are able.
choir, but we can, so we can have a more wonderful choir on uh, Rhythm and Roots Sunday. We've got lots of music planned for that day, and we could use your voices. So anybody that would love to participate, 615, we'll be looking for you. Okay, if we did, okay. this morning. Anyone? It's good to be here and not everything's going 
<laughs> okay, it is good to be here, no, regardless of what's going on. Any others? We have so much to be thankful for, and, and, and we just praise Him today. But you know, along with our praises, our witnesses, and our testimonies, we also have concerns. And you can see in your worship folders under our prayer concerns of uh, the list of names that we lift up weekly, and you can take these home and, and pray for these individuals on a daily basis. But we have others we want to, to uh, lift up uh, this morning. Uh, Sister Joanne is going to have a knee replacement uh, tomorrow in Johnson City. And uh, she's already been up here and been anointed with oil and prayed for. And, and Joanne, we love you. We're going to keep praying for you. And you're going to be just fine. Uh, God, God's got this. And also, we want to, Sister Carol's had some issues. We lift you up, Sister Carol. We love you. And, uh, and know that, uh, that God is with you as well. And, and also, uh, Don Dingus, we uh, continue to pray for him. He's been in a lot of pain. And uh, we want to lift him up as well as... Uh, John Dayton, our son-in-law, has had some back issues as well, and uh, uh, pray for him. And we want to lift up uh, Marissa Barker this morning, and uh, she has uh, had several blood clots, and a granddaughter to uh, uh, Sister Virginia, and uh, so we'll lift her up in prayer and just uh, pray that God will uh, uh, dilute those and eliminate them and, and bring uh, healing and comfort to her. Uh, and also we want to lift up Brother Randy uh, Pippen, who uh, has been under the weather and had a touch of pneumonia. He is home and taking antibiotics and recovering, so we want to pray for him. And also Sister Pam, who is, uh, is uh, there nursing and caring for him. And also uh, Sister Anna, and uh, they did close her up on Friday. Uh, we're going to go by the hospital today. She's still in uh, CICU. And uh, we want to lift her up in prayer and the family and, and just pray for God's mercy uh, and grace to be done. For, you know, God's will is perfect in all things. And we just, uh, we just uh, praise Him today. But perhaps you have someone or heard of someone, a neighbor, a loved one, a family member that you would like to lift up and have prayer for. Amen. Eric Ramey. Uh, I don't know all the details. I only know that he had surgery at the beginning. Okay. He had some surgery yesterday and again this morning. And before the surgery yesterday, I think he was on a ventilator, but mm -hmm. he was able to, to write and to joke and write and to get everyone ready for the Massachusetts this weekend and on the All right, Eric Ramey. We certainly will. Wrote that name down there and, and prayed for him. Are there any others? Do we have unspoken needs? God knows those. He's able to do abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. And something we haven't done since the pandemic has set in, although I've been doing it for individuals uh, as you requested. Uh, but we want to give you an opportunity this morning if there is someone that you would like to stand in intercessory prayer for, if you have a need yourself and you would like to be prayed for, that you might come at this time, that we might uh, lift you up to the Lord in prayer. Are there any needs? Any needs? children of God. And these are standing in intercessory prayer for Sister Anna. And Lord, you see the need that she has in her life. And we know, Lord, that you are able to do all things, for you are God. Hear our prayers and bring healing to this beloved child of God. And for the family, Lord, who are gathered with her and are sitting there, we pray, Lord, that for each of these you would send out upon them a spirit of comfort and peace with the calm assurance of knowing that as children of God, that you are in control. Lord, hear our prayers today, for we come to you in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. And as soon as our sister is seated, we will have a prayer for these. Let us go to the Lord. 
loving Father. As your gathered family, we take these moments to better understand our relationship with you. We come, Lord, this morning to praise you, to worship, to honor you, and to tell you, Lord, that we love you. For you are our God and we are your people. Lord, we ask also that as we seek your presence in our lives, that your love may be enveloped in our hearts, that others may see it and know your love through us. That your mercy may be shown in our actions as we reach out to those who are hurting, and those, Lord, who are without. And that your grace will be bestowed upon us. That, Lord, we may show a reflection of Christ in all that we say and do. We thank you, Lord, for the celebration of life, but we come to you with the needs of the many and for every name that is listed on our prayer concerns, for every name and every need that has been spoken here today, and for every unspoken need that we bear. And Lord, there are many. Allow us to bring them boldly to thy throne of grace. And Lord, we lay them before thee, and we ask but one thing. May thy will be done. Hear our prayers and answer our petitions, even now, as we join together to pray with the confidence of thy children, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And our responsive reading this morning can be found on number 794 in your hymnals. Psalm 71, our response. O Lord, you are my hope, my trust, Lord, from my youth. In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Be to me a rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Rescue me, Lord, oh my God, from the hands of the wicked, from the of For you, O oh Lord, are my hope, my trust, O oh Lord, from my youth. O oh Lord, you are my hope, my trust, Lord, from my youth. I have been an example to many, for you are my strong refuge. Do not cast me off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength is spent. The, those who watch for my life consult together, saying, O oh God, be not far from me. O oh Lord, you are my hope, my trust, Lord, from my youth. May we stand.
to someone in front of you, behind you, or beside you, and offer to them the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us ask God's blessing upon these gifts we are about to receive. Father God, thy provision has been sufficient and so much more. Truly, you have been good and taken care of your people. Lord, I ask that you would bless every hand that is able to give this day and those that cannot. That, Lord, you might bless this offering and multiply it, that through its use, as we meet the needs of the many, as we are about our Father's business, that you may be glorified. Hear our prayer, for we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.
God is good. And all the time. Good. good. Praise God. Yes, he is. All the time. You know, today's message is one about praise and prayer. Prayer and praise go together. You know, you can't have a spirit of praise and a spirit of revenge. You can't have a spirit of praise and a spirit of defeat. You can't have a spirit of praise and a spirit of discouragement. They don't go together. Prayer and praise go together. And Luke tells us in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, these, uh, these words, I'm going to begin with uh, the 23rd verse of chapter 16 in, in the book of the Acts. And Luke writes, and when they had laid many stripes on them, them being Paul and Silas, who were arrested. Remember, I preached a couple of weeks ago about Paul uh, committing himself, going to, uh, as a citizen of Rome, so that they wouldn't beat him anymore, and, and it worked. And so, but this is one of the times he took a, took a beating. They had laid many stripes on them. They threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them in the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called with a loud voice saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. And immediately, immediately, he and all his family were baptized. Now when he had brought them into his house, he set food before them. And he rejoiced, having believed in God with all his household. The word of God presented to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, as we come before you today, I pray that we may be emboldened like Paul and Silas and the early disciples to be unashamed, Lord, of praising you, of praying to you, of allowing, Lord, you to work in a mighty way in our lives that others might see. Hear our prayers. I ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart might be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. For I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now notice the, it said the other prisoners were listening. No doubt the jailer was listening too. He awoke from his sleep when the earthquake came and the chains were loosed and the doors were open and he ran in with his sword. He was about to kill himself because he was charged with keeping the prisoners. And if the prisoners had escaped or gotten away, he would be killed by the Romans anyway. So he was going to go ahead and do himself in. But what he found was Paul and Silas were standing there unafraid and he fell down. And asked, what must I do to be saved? And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. If you're watching today 
and you've never made that commitment and you've never made that profession of faith, today is the day of salvation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and he will fill your heart with a joy unspeakable and full of glory. They were listening. You know, Kathy and I, whenever we go out to eat, no matter where it is, we always pray. We hold hands and we pray openly and loudly. And I can't tell you the number of people who have come up to us and they said, we heard your prayer. And it just felt so good to hear someone pray. People listen to us. People watch us. We are to be an example, as Paul and Silas, of how to pray to God and how to praise God. Unashamed. Jesus said, if you stand ashamed of me before men, I will stand ashamed of you before the Holy Father and the Holy Angels. Lord, I never want him to be ashamed of me, Lord, never. I know there are times that I fail him. Paul warns us and he reminds us that we all fall short of the glory of God. How often? Daily. Daily. We fall short of the glory of God. But here, the prisoners were listening. Paul and Silas were praising God and singing hymns to him. And the jailer came in. And it said that he believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. He and his household, and they were all saved. And immediately they were baptized. Now, you know, there's a lot of denominations that I'll tell you. I was in one when I first got saved. I want to be baptized right away. Well, you're going to wait. You've got to learn, you know, uh, this or that. I want you to learn the polity of the denomination. Well, I'm here to tell you the denomination can't save you. The church can't save you. It takes a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And whenever you hear someone being saved, often it's said after that, immediately they were baptized. Immediately, he and his household were baptized. Not a month from then, not a year from then. Immediately. When the eunuch was being witnessed to by Philip, and he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, he looked around, he said, where's some water? I want to be baptized. Immediately, he was baptized. Don't let anybody delay. If you've not been baptized, get baptized. Immediately. Then God can start using you in a mighty way in the church. Using you to teach Sunday school. Using you, maybe even called to preach. Using you as a witness. How can we be a witness if we've never followed the example of our Lord Jesus Christ? Praise and prayer. They go together. We think sometimes, well, we're living in a free country. We can do what we want and we can pray what we want. Well, I can tell you. As being a chaplain for the Department of Corrections for 16 years, it's not that easy. If you think you're that free, go ask the mayor or the town council if you can put a nativity scene up in front of the offices down there in, in, in the park. Ask them. Ask them if you can maybe erect a monument to the Ten Commandments. Ask them if you can put up a cross. There will always be resentment and always be those who will come against you. Always. Because the evil one, he sees that God is winning the battle. He sees that souls are being saved. When the Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost, Pentecost means 50, was 50 days after Jesus had left, 50 days later, God poured out his Holy Spirit upon those who were in the upper room. And they were filled with the Spirit and began speaking in tongues so that others could hear them in their own language. But more than that, they were emboldened to come out of hiding and to openly proclaim the name of Jesus. We read in the book of Acts how John and, and Peter had been arrested on numerous occasions and warned not to pray in the name of Jesus. And Peter said, who should we believe, man or God? For there is no other name by which a man must be saved. There is no other way by which a man can be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If there were any other way to salvation except through the Lord Jesus Christ, then his death is meaningless because we could have gone another way. But there is no other way. There is no other name 
in heaven or on earth by which we must be saved. Peter and John said, we will continue to pray and to heal in the name of Jesus. And Paul and Silas did the same thing. And they were all martyred. All of them. The only two disciples, the only two original disciples that weren't martyred was John, who died of old age, but he, he had been martyred really on the island of Patmos. He had been put there for preaching the gospel, which was a penal colony for many years. And Judas Iscariot, who killed himself when he realized that he had betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. All the others were martyred. All of them. And they died hideous deaths. Barnabas was flayed, skinned alive. Many were crucified. Some were killed with arrows, some with stones and sticks. Some were burned at the stake. But they didn't care. Because they knew that they were going to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it for a minute. What can they do? They can put us in prison. They can fine us. And yes, they can kill us. But what does that mean? That means that we're going to go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to a place where there is no more pandemics, where there is no sickness, where there is no suffering, where there is no death. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? It has been defeated through the Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead. We serve a risen Savior today. And Jesus died upon that cross on the hill called Golgotha, which means the skull at Calvary. He died there passionately for us. That week was known as his passion because he loved us passionately. And he died for us passionately and he wants us to worship him passionately. To praise him. To be unafraid to lift up holy hands. You know, the early church, one of the reasons that they, they held out hands to the Lord in worship was to identify with the crucified Savior. Because this is how he died. He was nailed to that cross and he could have called on 10,000 angels. He could have come off on himself. It wasn't the nails that held him there. It was his love for you. It was his love for you. He died to save a wretch like me. And how can I not offer praise and worship to honor his name? You know, the last week after our, our service, those hymns that you selected, Philip, were, they were just out of this world, some of my favorites. And how could you not lift up holy hands? How could you not praise God? How could you not say, Lord, I love you today? We have come here today, not by accident, but by divine invitation. Every one of you were invited by the Holy Spirit, by God, to be here, to hear his word, to worship him, to praise him, and to let him know how much you love him. We're here because we love him, are we not? Because he first loved us. God loves you today. He loves you so dearly and so desperately. And he wants more than anything that personal relationship with you. It means more than anything. Church membership is good. I want all of you to belong to the church. But your relationship with Jesus is the most important thing. That's what it's all about. That's what it was about for the Lord. And when you're born again, when you come to that moment that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, everything changes. Everything changes. It doesn't look the same anymore. Satan will try to bring up your past. He'll say, I don't remember what you did. Remember when you did this? Remember when you did that? Have none of it. Say, the Lord has dropped the charges. I have been justified. He has forgiven me. You are justified by the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've heard me say it so often. On the day of Passover, when the angel of death was coming, to take the firstborn of every household in Egypt. A plague that was brought on Egypt by the Pharaoh himself. 
children of God were told to sacrifice a lamb and to put the blood on the doorposts. When the angel of death came, he didn't care who was in the house. He didn't care what they had done. He saw the blood and he passed over and everyone lived. If you've applied the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, even though your sins were as scarlet, even though they were as red as scarlet, they have been washed as white as snow. And you can stand holy and righteous before God. Remember I asked you, how many of you can stand holy and righteous before God? And everybody's always, oh, don't ask me that. Test. Listen, every one of you that has accepted Jesus and been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Because God doesn't see your sins. He doesn't see your failures. He doesn't see your faults. He sees a child that's been washed in the blood of his son. And he loves you. He loves you today. How can you not praise him? Prayer and praise go together. You can't have any resentment in your heart for any brother or sister. Or for anybody for that matter. Because we're not battling against flesh and blood. We're battling against principalities of darkness. We're battling against the spirit of the Antichrist. And it's prevalent in the world today. And it's happening more and more even in this great nation. And so more than ever, we have to stand on God's word. More than ever, we have to let the light of Christ shine in us. Remember I told you last week, in a world that's filled with darkness, spiritual darkness, one little candle looks like a beacon. Your light, the light of Christ, the light of Christ that exists in you, if someone can see it, like the prisoners who heard the praise and the hymns that were being sung by Paul and Silas, they heard, and they were encouraged by people that come up to us. We heard your prayer. They were encouraged. People are looking for a spiritual way to acknowledge God, to let God know that they love Him. But we are so timid, and some are just so bashful. And some, I hate to say it, are just plain out ashamed. Well, I cannot be ashamed as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord, amen? And it's my prayer that us here at Anderson Street United Methodist Church will be a beacon in a world that is full of spiritual darkness. The example has been set. Remember last week, I told you the book of Acts didn't have an ending. It didn't end. Because it continues. It continues through us. It continues in us. And we are to continue to carry out the teachings of our Lord and Savior, just as the early apostles did. You, every one of you that have been born again, the Great Commission has been given to you to go out into all the world, making disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It's a great calling, a great calling. And we need to approach it unashamed, unafraid, and do not be timid. Because what are they going to do? The worst they can do is send us to be with God in glory. And I long for that day. I look forward to that day. Paul looked forward to that day. You know, Shakespeare wrote, to be or not to be. You know, Sister Margaret, I think he got that from the Apostle Paul. He read Paul, and Paul said, I'm torn between the two, going on to be with Christ, which is far greater, or remaining here with you all. He was torn to remain here, he said, but either way, I will be Christ's. If, if God leaves us here, to be a hundred years old, we can praise him and worship him and honor him and let him know that we love him and be an example. Or if he takes us home, then we'll be in his presence there and we'll honor him and we'll praise him and we will worship him. It doesn't matter where we are. Our praise is to be never ending. It's just to go on as long as we have a breath in us. As Brother Philip comes, Brother Charlie, 
We turn to our closing hymn, number 496, Sweet Hour of Prayer. I want to ask you a question. Perhaps you're watching. Perhaps you haven't made that profession of faith, as I said earlier, that today is the day of salvation. All you have to do is say, Lord, enter into my heart. Forgive me. I want to serve you. And everything will be different. I remember when I came to the altar and, and I accepted Jesus. It was a Damascus Road event. I remember it vividly. It was the last night of a revival in 1976 in March. It was on a Wednesday night. And God called me when the pastor, my spiritual father, the Reverend Walter Wyatt, gave the altar call. And I thought, I can't go up there. They'll all know I'm a sinner. Well, they all know I'm a sinner anyway. And I thought, Lord, this is going to be so hard. And I stepped out in the aisle, and it was the easiest thing I ever did. Brother Mike, I was almost running when I got to the altar, and I got down on my knees. And Brother Walter came over, and he says, what do you want to pray about? I said, I want to give my heart to Jesus. And he started shouting and dancing across the front. He said, glory to God. Brother Bobby Laney came up, and they laid hands on me, and they said, pray with me. And I prayed with them. And I felt all the guilt and all the sin and all the burdens of that young 22 years old. i just gotten out of the military in February. And this was March. I felt it all melt away. And when I got up from there, everything was different. I had no worries. I had no concerns. God sent Captain into my life. But we all have a cross to bear. <laughs> Lord, Lord, forgive me. She was, she was the best thing happened to me other than getting saved and then the, the birth of our daughter. But all you have to do is accept Jesus. Accept Jesus today because he loves you. Before 96, let us stand. Sweet hour of prayer. <laughs> strayed or perhaps never made that commitment. But today was the day. 
Lord, I pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit in a mighty way and manifest it in their lives so that they will be emboldened to tell others that they serve the risen Savior today. Lord, you have called us your church here at Anderson Street United Methodist to make a difference in our community, in our workplace, in our schools, even in our homes. And some of the hardest people to witness to, to change, to offer salvation to, our family, our peers, or those who are closest to us. Embolden us, Lord, in a mighty way to, to be unashamed, to be unafraid, to offer to you our praise, our worship, and our love. Father, I ask this in the holy and precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen.